Hey guys, Crypto Lamy here, bringing you more juicy Splinterlands content. And today we've got a super special episode for you. But firstly, if you enjoy SPS, DEC and card giveaways, make sure that you join our community Discord channel and Twitch streams as we'd love for you to join in on the Splinterlands discussion as well as win some prizes. Uh, for that, I will leave the linkage in the video description below. But now back to the video. So in this one, guys, we're going to go through a tool that, in my opinion, is the most evolved Splinterlands tool I've seen to date. It has a myriad of features that even the official Splinterlands UI has yet to implement. But the main reason I love it is because it has the ability to assist every type of Splinterlands player, whether you're a beginner, a casual player, a guild member or a guild leader. This tool is going to increase your productivity tenfold. So let's get straight into it and highlight some of the incredible features available so you too can take advantage of it. Baron's Toolbox, guys. Baron's Toolbox. Now I'll leave all the linkage in the video description below for when you're finished and want to check out the website at your own pace. But for a bit of fun, I thought as an example would randomly choose one of the names off the rich list top 100 so that we can explore the toolbox more in depth. Oh, here we go, Yabamat, one of the Splinterlands creators. So let's copy his name, and now we can enter it on the Baron's Toolbox side. So straight off the bat, guys, the graphical user interface provides an extremely easy and clean way to explore the inventory of the inputted player. Everything from their packs, their potions, the land, it's all there, easy to see. Even the new Chaos Legion vouchers are there. And if this isn't a good indication that the devs really believe in the SPS, with Matt having over 500,000 staked, I don't know what is. Also, that's a pretty monstrous win streak he's got going there. They really weren't lying when they said that they were gamers before creators. 67 in a row. Jesus. So below the standard inventory, we also have all the cards that are owned by the player. But what's really interesting is these tabs running horizontal above the cards here. Now to understand this more, we'll pick another familiar account here. How about Infidel1258, Mr. Dwayne Cunningham. A quick plug for his channel here too, guys. Uh, go and check him out. The insight from this guy is unparalleled if you're interested in Splinterlands content. Uh, but now if we scroll down here, we can see what cards he is currently delegating out. If we hit the delegation out button. <laughs> but look at this. I love this guy. He's delegating 277 cards out and he's only renting out to other players two other cards. So most likely, instead of getting income from renting all of his cards out, he's most likely just delegating them to community members who need them. What a legend. So we could scroll through these cards and see precisely when the player last used the card. For instance, this card here has never been used. Uh, so that will allow us to make the decision to possibly think about grabbing that one back or undelegating that card. The same goes with rentals here too. We can look at our rentals and make an informed decision. For instance, this one doesn't matter because it looks like it was last used today. But perhaps if you've seen that the player who's renting hasn't used the card for ages, but you notice they're still paying rental costs, then maybe you could be a good guy or a gal and cancel that rental as they may have extended the period of the rental and perhaps have forgotten about it. So seeing as Infidel1258 doesn't have that many cards rented out or isn't renting any cards, let's jump into a different account here of another popular YouTuber so we can see how the rentals are shown. Now if we scroll down, we can see that we can also view the exact amount of DEC from both our cards rented as well as our cards rented out giving you a great vantage over the difference between your incoming and outgoings. This could be useful if you wanted to make sure that if you are renting out, you aren't paying more for your cards than the income you're receiving from your own rentals. For the newer players, instead of perhaps purchasing a card which has an ability that you like, you may find that you already have that card, but the ability just isn't showing up because it's not upgraded. So with this toolbox, you can simply click on the ability that you're interested in, Let's choose blind here as an example. And not only will it give you a synopsis of exactly what that ability does, but then Baron would do his magic and show you all the cards which you own, which already have this ability, even sorted by different splinters, if you so choose. Now, if we hover over the card, it will tell you precisely 
at what level you receive this ability. If you want to look at all the cards in Splinterlands which have this ability and not just your own, then you can click on the far right tab here, which will show you all the cards available with that ability. Again, you can hover over the card and see at what level that monster will get that ability. Super simple and super easy. So now let's explore what this tool has to offer for guild members and guild leaders, because I really think Baron's toolbox shines here and this is going to make it infinitely easier for a lot of people. So we can access guilds either from the player snapshot here or by simply inputting the guild name above. So once we've done that, this page really gives us an understanding of the guild and its respective players. Here we can see everything such as when the player joined the guild up the top here, the amount of battles won, lost and their win percentage rates. But where this gets really interesting and I know will help out many guild managers massively is that they can bookmark their own guild page, view it maybe after every season and easily come in here and check the members have been contributing to the guild as they should be. It will also show you here when the player in the guild last participated in a ranked match. If it wasn't for months, you could probably determine that that player has now gone inactive and perhaps make room for someone else if guild spots were scarce. If we hover over each of these items, it will show precisely how much each player has contributed towards buildings and their average donation per week. So for the guild leaders who are finding it difficult to stay on top of this, this could be the perfect solution with its easy to navigate interface. I also got the chance to catch up with the creator of this fine tool recently and interviewed him on what's to come. And it seems like that this page and this part of the toolbox will play a big role moving forwards. I've notarized the interview below so you can check that out too. But guys, go check out this awesome tool. Make sure if you can spare it, send Baron a donation through on his website. Anything helps support these type of amazing projects and we certainly want them to stick around. It's totally free to use, but I can guarantee the cost of hosting and time spent creating and implementing new features would require continuous outlay. So let's support and keep these projects alive. And that's it guys. If you've enjoyed this video and you're interested in more Splinterlands content, please like and subscribe to my channel as that would mean the world to me. But other than that, I will see you on the blockchain.